Uh, hello, this is a uh, video that shows a process of doing a site reduction, site reduction of the planet of a, a sextant site of planet Jupiter. And uh, we'll use the star path work forms and the almanac data and so forth that's in the back of our textbook. So this is, I, I show this for reference, this is our textbook. If you go to this page for our textbook on, the, uh, on our website and then click this button support, then you would get to... Uh, uh, this page here, uh, which this is the link to it, starpath.com, sell that book. And here are various resources you can use. This is the problem we're going to solve right here. It's from quiz eight, number 19. But here's a, and these are open to the public. Uh, these are uh, our student pro uh, uh, materials, but it's, they're open to the public. Then you can get our work form, some plotting sheets, copies of 249 and so forth. Uh, the um, Here's a table selections, and here's a full set of increments and corrections. The book just has a few pieces. So here's the problem. We got a 30300 oh, uh, watch time, October 26, 1978, a position a 30 uh, south, south latitude. This is a DR position, 115 west, course and speed. And then an hour later, uh, let's see, a little bit over an hour later, you observed uh, HS of Jupiter, 34 degrees something. And then here's the data we need for a celestial site. We got the, the watch air is six seconds slow. And this is site time is given in terms of watch time. And then zone description of the watch, of the watch. It always depends on what the watch is. Doesn't matter where we are. As eight hours plus eight, uh, height of I nine feet, index correction 0.5 off the arc. If it's off, you put it on. So this will be a plus. Um, the one note to make, look, this is back in 1978, uh, which is uh, reflects when we started teaching celestial navigation here at Star Path. But uh, the beauty of celestial navigation is this does not matter. Uh, these sites, the way we do them back then and the way we do them now and the way we do them another 30 years ahead of now are all going to be essentially the same using these tables and so forth. We're doing this by tables. In the end, I'll show you some calculator solutions where you just push a couple buttons. But uh, these are the standard techniques that we use. And then we use, here's our work forms here that you can download. And here then is the answer that we're after. We want this, in other words, the, the way that you end up specifying a line of position, the site reduction, is you uh, you end up with an assumed position. Let me go back and read this question again. It says, when you, this is all the data, and says, what is your assumed position that's necessary to do the site reduction with tables? And then what is the A value and ZN of the site? That's the way you specify a line of position from a celestial site. And so the, the, the assumed position here is um, A latitude is uh, uh, 30, 30 degrees south. A longitude is uh, 115 degrees, 7.4 west, and the, uh, then the A value is 0 0.9 minutes, uh, 9 minutes away from this 033. True. Okay, so that we want to get, here's the answer. Here's how you plot the LOP down in box six. We start up here with one. So here's the site data that I'm just taking literally right off of here, the site data off of there. And that's a site with watch time 41047. The watch was uh, slow. Uh, so we have to add six seconds, uh, zone eight. So here, the, the UTC of the site, which we need to go in the nautical almanac, 12 hours, 10 minutes, 53 seconds. Here's the date. Here's the body of Jupiter, the DR position, height of eyes, nine feet. This place on our form is just where to put a label uh, for, you know, sorting through if you have a bunch of these forms. It's just a way to find a to label it. Now, the, let's do, there's different ways you can approach it. You can either solve, do, do the sextant corrections down this side first, or you can do the almanac part first. And we'll, I'll do the almanac first. So we, we want to look up the GP, geographical position of Jupiter, at this particular time, which we get from the nautical almanac at 12, at, on this date, at this time. And so that page is here. And that's in the back. This, this would be in the back of our textbook. This, in other words, when, when you go work our problems, everything you need to work the problems is in that one textbook. You just pull that book out and lay it on the table. And everything should be there. In this, um, with, with, with the other things that you download from, the, uh, from that 
reference I get. So here's the here's the daily page of the almanac. We have Jupiter. This number beside it has the brightness of Jupiter. It's a negative uh, minus 1.7 magnitude, very bright. And so we got the date. There's there's three days per page on the on the uh, on the almanac. We want the 26th, and we uh, we want the 20. Whoop! Let me get back to here. Um, I thought, okay, back to the 26th, and then we won at 12 hours. And so here's the data, this, this 84, and that's this, this data right here. I just look at here, 84 degrees, set, uh, and that's a GHA and declination at exactly 12 hours. So then we, then we come back to the form, and that, that, data goes, uh, that data goes right in, you know, right in here. 84 degrees, 23.7, and there's a the declination goes right there. So that's in the form there. Now, what's the next thing we? Oh, okay. So when we look at the form, that is the uh, GHA and the declination exactly 12 hours. Then we need the V. Now, this V applies only to. It says right on the form only moon and planets. It only applies to moon and planets. It's the sun, you star, you draw a line through here. But this is a this. Uh, it, uh, this V correction is uh, accounts for the fact that the moon and planets, because they have their own orbital motion relatively near us, uh, they, uh, it affects the rate that the GHA moves around the Earth. Uh, and so that GHA, and then this declination, this is a D, uh, a D correction, which is how much the declination changes per hour. And we get those at the at the bottom of this. We come back over here to the daily page and go to the bottom. See, this is the top of the page. That's the bottom of the daily page here. And this is the column we were in. There's V. It's 2.2. These are always plus. I think Venus can sometimes be minus. If, if it is minus, it'll be minus. It'll put a minus here. But uh, I think most of them are plus and um, Unless it says otherwise, a V is plus. So that's 2.2, and the D is 0.1. The D is 0.1, but we have to decide if it's plus or minus by looking, is the declination going up or down with time? And here we see it's going, it is 43.1, 42, 42.1. It's going down, so this D is minus. So we go back into the form, and we put a minus in this D, minus 0 0.1, and here we just copy the V. 2.2. That's that. So that's the exact hourly data we get from the daily page of the Almanac. Now we need to go to the increments and corrections pages. And for our students, let me note that this is this has got a 10 minutes. It's a 10 minute increment. And so you have to go download and it, it reminds us in this in this question here. Uh, in this question, it tells you you can go to this link and download a full set of increments and corrections. The book only has about, you know, five or six of those, and so we need to download the full set. So now we go to the increments and corrections for 10 minutes, and uh, 10 minutes. Let's get, the, let's get the first part, how much the GHA changes. In other words, Let's go back here. So this is where at this is a G, the GP, the point right underneath Jupiter at at um, at exactly 12 hours was at this longitude and latitude. That's exactly where it, where the GP was. You'd look straight up and see Jupiter at 12 hours on that date at uh, this la latitude and longitude. Now the thing is moving. The GP is moving west at about uh, 15 degrees per hour. And so the question is, how far did it move in 10? minutes and 53 seconds and that we look up in the increments and corrections pages here's 10 minutes now i got to go down to 50 see here's sun and planets here's 10 minutes i have to go down to down to the bottom of the page here 53 so that is two degrees and 43.3 minutes so that's how far it moved in in the, in that 10 uh, 10 53 and so we just write this 10 right here is how much it moved here two degrees 43.3 that goes right there now, how much did the declination change? Um, the declination in um, the declination. See, it it didn't change much here. So that's a the d. It's it's changing 0.1 minutes per hour. How much did it change in 10 minutes? The answer is zero. So that correction for the declination d is zero. These columns here, this column, this column, and this column, right? Now over here, you're 11 minutes. This is 10 minutes. It's 11 minutes. So these are three values of v and d. They're both the same 
use the same table. Now our uh, and but the D, let's see, we got a V correction, V 2.2. So V is 2.2, and that's always plus, right? Unless we're told somehow it's minus. But uh, this is um, 0.4. So we go to here, the V correction. The V correction, it says GHA plus, uh, or is a plus to the GHA, or the V correction, it's plus 0 0.4. Oh, SHA, that's the SHA. I, I, I gotta zoom that in. Or V correction. See, if we're doing a stars, this would be a SHA goes in here. So it's a V correction plus 0.4. Now we've got, we got the hours, we got the minutes and seconds, we got the V correction. You just add those up and you're getting 86, 67.4. And you gotta rewrite that. 80, and that takes 60 out of here, add it to here, you got 87, 7.4. So that's the, that's the uh, GHA of Jupiter at the exact site time. All corrections. Now we got to choose an assumed longitude, and we want to choose, and then we're in a west longitude, so we're going to subtract it. And this notation here reminds us that we would ha we've got to choose these minutes here to cancel these. So we know the minutes are going to be 7.4. That's no problem. We go back and look at our DR. Our, our DR is, uh, yeah, okay, we're good on that. And so we would then choose a 115. So we're gonna, we want, we want to choose the one, we want to choose this sum longitude to have the same minutes as this and as close to this point as possible. And that's 115, 7.4. We have tons of ex extra exercises with that practicing that single step. So you take minus 115, so you subtract this from this, those go away, zero, that's right. And then this comes minus 28, so we gotta add 360, so we got three, three, two. So that's the first part. Local hour angle is 332. So remember what this means, just a review. This says that at the site time, the GH, the GP, the GP of Jupiter, Jupiter itself was 87 degrees, 7.4 minutes west of Greenwich. That's what that means. This is telling us that at the site time, the GP of Jupiter was 332 degrees west of us sitting at this longitude right here. So it's all the way around. In fact, it's, we, would, we would turn around and instead of looking west to the right, 332 degrees all around, this thing was actually about 30 degrees to the left of us, left of our meridian. Okay, so the deck, okay, now the, the, this box we're filling in with all the stuff we need to go to the site reduction tables. And so we put the degrees part of the declination, that's up here, 18, and we circle the north. And the latitude, or DR latitude, we just round this off, it's a 2.0, so that's just 30, and that's a south. So this is everything, now not, box four now is everything for the site reduction tables. Plus we got this notice, we got an N and an S. These are so-called contrary names, contrary names. Now we're ready to uh, go to the site reduction tables. Uh, this line here, we just had, here's our declination from the almanac. We put the correction in, which is zero. Now this, for a planet, these could, these could actually be bigger, bigger, big numbers, but right now, this one happened to be zero because we're so close to the hour. 10 minutes. All right. This box here is we're doing we're using 249 for this site reduction. This is a box we have on our work form if you're using 229. We're not using 229. And now we go to the site reduction tables. We go to the site reduction tables. Um, let's see here. That's here. Oh no, that's not the site reduction tables. Where are the site reduction tables? Okay, I thought I had this all organized in a very nice way. Okay, I'm gonna have to pause and go put it, get the site reduction tables and put this data in. Somehow I left those two pictures out. I'll be back in one second. Okay, I'm back. I, I don't know what happened. I had this, I, I just lost this slide. In fact, I'm fairly proud of myself that I figured out how this use a PowerPoint here to get all these various pieces organized so I didn't lose anything and could always find it. And then sure enough, I 
put one in and then must have deleted it or wrote over it. But anyway, so here we are back at the form and we got box four is everything we need to go to the site reduction tables. The LHA, the declination latitude, contrary name. Now, so we then go into the site reduction tables and this is volume two of 249 and then you'll have to flip through it. You have to first of all get to the section called latitude 30 degrees and there'll be 10, 20 pages in there of, of, uh, of, of 30 degrees. Then you also have to find the area of contrary name. The other section will be same name. So we've got, we got to go latitude 30, we got to go to contrary name, and then we got to find the declination 15 to 29. There'll be another section like 0 to 15 or something. So we find the right section of the book and then on the right section you can find the LHA. Notice here you can find the LHA on either side of the table. This one's on this side 332 and then over here is declination 18 and then you come down to 18 to 32 and your, your data that you want is right here. It's HC D and Z. This is the calculated uh, computed height. This is how much the height changes if the declination changes one degree. Now that's called D. Keep in mind that's a, frankly a totally different D value than the other D value we've been using related to declination in another sense. And this is the azimuth angle, the relative bearing of the body relative to the elevated pole. Okay, and so here's the answer in here. You can't read it necessarily here, but I've zoomed it in. It's 34 degrees, uh, 52 and that. And that goes, um, that number uh, goes right into here. That's your tabulated HC, 34, 56, minus 52. See, the minus 52 is how much it's changing. We need that for a correction. And then the Z, you see the Z is 147. So that goes in here. Now we need to know the correct, we need to apply the correction that this D52 is implying. And we go then to the uh, increments and corrections table, which is uh, this next table here and that's in the back of the book and that is it's actually you could do d this is a this is the d value across the top and the increments of the declination the minutes down this side and we have uh, we have in our minutes here see we have 43.8 43.8. Now, some people at this point would just round this to 44 and go into 44 and then uh, come over here and put 38. But you can interpolate that and we found over the years that it's uh, right more often than wrong um, or let's say better more often than not better uh, to interpolate that. It'll always be a trivial interpolation. Uh, so this is 43, this is, you know, in other words, at 43, the correction is 37, and at 44, the correction is 38, so at 43.8, the correction is 37.8. That's, and you could, you could call that 38. Nobody could mark you wrong on that. But in the long run, you maybe will more often than not gain a couple tenths of accuracy. Um, okay, and so that's the correction. That's the correction that we put here, 37.8. And this D was minus, so this is minus. So then we go here and we've got that. Then we got the final calculated height, computed height. It's, thir it's this out of the book. Minus this, we got 34, 18.2. And then we follow the arrows over here, and we write that right here, 34, 18.2. Now we have to go and do the rest of these corrections um, for the sextant. We want to get the observed height, so we have to make corrections to. We're going to compare the observed height to the calculated height, and that's how we get the A value, the altitude intercept. So here's 34 degrees. We start with that. The index correction, if it's on, you take it off. And if it's... Um, if it's uh, Oh, I got to pause again. Okay, I'm back from another long distraction. I apologize. So we're doing the corrections here. HS, uh, HS going to HA, going on to HO, the observed height. And so we did the uh, index correction. If it's on, you take it off. It's off, you put it on, and ours was off, so that's plus 0.5. And then we get the dip at 9 feet, and now we go to the uh, altitude correction tables. That's in the nautical almanac 
front part of the nautical almanac and there's a copy of this in our textbook and so there's feet and meters here we go to feet everything between 8.6 and 9.2 is a correction minus 2.9 that's the dip that goes right here and so then we've got HA is here now going down uh, that that's like just all those added up now this is additional correction for the moon the Mars and Venus now Mars and Venus we're doing Jupiter which is a planet Mars and Venus the two closest planets, they have, if you look on the Almanac page here, they have sometimes a special correction. But it's just those two, Mars and Venus, and they'll be on this page here, on the altitude correction page, and they'll be sitting in here, and it depends on the season. But it's just Mars and Venus, not Jupiter and Saturn. And also, this part, these tables out here on the outside, they, they're very good for any year whatsoever. But these, out, these special corrections are dated and they go inside here. Um, this is a weird situation. We've just, we've combined two, on, in, the, in our textbook, we've put two years in the same column. But normally in the almanac, there would just be one year inside there, which would be the present year of the almanac. But this is not those. So there's none of those special corrections. We have altitude corrections all sites. Now, this is certainly all sites. And that's here, stars and planets. And we've got to go down to our HA. See, our HA 34, 18.7. So 30, whoops, um, that's here. Oh, okay, let's see how am I going to show that. Okay, you. I think you can see that from here. Anything between 33.45 and 35.40, that's a correction minus 1.4. So I put that minus 1.4 here. And so now we sum up these things and we get HO, 34 degrees, 17.3. So now we're comparing HO to HC to get the A value. A value is the difference between those two. And, the, and, the, um, and then you take, this is a difference here, uh, let's see, 34, 34. 18.2 minus 19.3 is 0 0.9. And then with our form, you take the label next to the one, the biggest one. So it's A. So it's 0.9 minutes away. Or you use the jingle calculated greater away. If calculated greater is away, uh, if it calculates greater, you use the label away. And it calculated is greater. Or you okay, so that's that, and then here's the ZN. Okay, we got to get the ZN. We have the we have the Z value. This is the relative azimuth. This is the azimuth relative to the elevated pole. Now we want the true bearing of the object, which way we actually looked, and those rules are down here on every form and on every site reduction table. They're on those as well, and it says LHA greater than one, south latitude. See north latitude, south south latitude. So you get south latitude. LHA greater than 180. So what's our LHA? 332. That's greater than 180. What's the ZN? 180 minus Z. So I put a little 180 here. Subtract 147. That's 33. So here is then the answer to the question. Part A answer. Part A is what is your assumed position? The assumed position is 30 degrees south, 115, 7.4 west. What is the A value? 0 0.9 minutes away from 0, 033. So that's the answer to that. And that's the answer. That's the answer to the question. So I'm following up now with two. So that's the answer to the quiz question. You put those two in, you get the answer right. So now I want to follow up with two, one other thought. Uh, let me get this out of the way. Now here we are. Well, the thing that came that I want to address is let me go back to the let me go back up here to the very question itself. You see, we were given a dr position at three o'clock, three hundred, oh three hundred, and your actual sight time is at four ten. So, and I just used this. I just used this to do the site because I actually knew the answer already. I'd already checked it. But in, but I. So I used this one. But in principle, to do this right, to do this right, you got a site at four four o'clock, four hours, ten minutes, and your last dr is here. So your first step before you even do such a site reduction is dr from here to here. 
And that often happens, by the way, when you're doing a Coast Guard, well, real life world, you always have to do this, you have to correct it. But if you're doing a Coast Guard exam, you'll have to do that always. And you're going to DR for six hours at 20 knots on a Coast Guard exam. So you would miss everything completely if you didn't do this right. But in this one, we have a one hour run at something like 7.9 knots. So it's probably not going to matter. And um, so if I come down here now and look at this picture, so here is the DR at 3 o'clock. And see, here, here was the 7.4 minutes that we dealt with, and here's 30 degrees, right? So, so our assumed position was 30 south, 115, 7.4. Now, here's where the DR was, and that's the DR I used to choose the assumed position. But you see, if you DR'd up to here, up now DR up to 411, and you see you move from here to here, course 350, 7.9, you go from here to here. You see, that puts you here. You're still closest to 30, and that's not going to change your 7.4 choice. You would have to be clear over, clear over here somewhere to do to change before you would change that as uh, uh, AP value, assume position value. So that, that's something to keep in mind when you're when you're given a, one of these problems to work and you got a DR position at a given time. Be sure that you DR properly up to the site time to get it right. Second, I want to show something else. Um, we have Sarpath also hosts this work of. Um, uh, Stan Klein. He wrote a program called Celestial Tools, and you can get it from that same page that's cited, you know, back up uh, right, right here. You go to this page. You, there's a link down at the bottom to get to this, to get to that, uh, this uh, Celestial Tools. Then Celestial Tools is an older program, but it has some very unique features. One of which is right here called SR, Site Reduction Methods and Fix. So if you click that, you get this page. You get this page here. And that this is all the different ways you can do site reduction. Now what, um, Pub 249, 229, 211, 208, Law of Signs, that means Law of Cosine, that means you just calculate it directly. And so what this page will do was show you, you just put in your data, here's a GHA, here's a declination, here's HO and the DR. Then you click this button, whatever one you want to look at. I clicked Pub 229, 249 here, and it shows me what all the, what all the, you know, basically it shows what all these values ought to be, right? All the three, you know, the 332, look at this, 332, 30 south, 18 north, you know, and so forth. So this, keep that in mind if you're studying celestial navigation and studying different methods of doing site reduction, that you can always use Stan Klein's program here to check out to see what you got right. The what he calls NASR, that's a Na nautical almanac site reduction tables, that's what we call the NAO table. What, well, well, I think most people now these days. This was done a long time ago, um, but now these tables I think are re the one that the site reduction tables in the almanac are called NAO tables now. I believe by most people, and so uh, you can do this button. Click that. Well, it's not this is a picture of a picture, so you're not going to see anything here. But if you click this, then you'll see how to how to get uh, what all the NAO tables. And there's tons more steps there. Okay, so that's this long, long, uh, detailed uh, uh, how to do a site reduction of the planet uh, Jupiter.